Today, we're looking at why car headlights are getting even brighter, but why that's actually a very dangerous thing. I'll explain the difference between lumens, watts, and kelvin, and I'll also talk about different types of headlight bulbs. I'll also show you how to easily adjust your headlights yourself. Lastly, if you want to increase your car's resale value, I'll show you how to permanently restore your headlights for just 10 bucks each. Here's the problem. Last year, GM issued a recall that impacted over 740,000 crossovers in the U.S. and 85,000 of them in Canada. Apparently, the headlight beams on the impacted cars were too bright and caused glare for oncoming drivers. In addition, in some cases, daylight running lights weren't deactivating when the headlights were on, which could cause extra glare. Also, headlights on GMC terrain models from 2010 to 2017 had a glitch that caused them to shine brightly on the side of the car at an angle that was up to 45 degrees. That resulted in the terrain's headlights being three times too bright. GM defended itself by stating that at that angle, the stray bright reflection couldn't really blind anyone. Now let me shed some more light on headlight problems like these. Many different factors can contribute to headlights being too bright. From a mechanical standpoint, it's possible that headlights could be too bright for themselves. For example, some sellers of cheap aftermarket LED bulbs market them as being 9,999 lumens or some other unrealistic number just to bait consumers. The problem is, some consumers think that the more lumens the better, but they don't realize that those lights are way too bright and unnecessary. In fact, oftentimes super bright ones quickly overheat and can damage your headlight housing and cost you hundreds of dollars. What you should do instead is look for LED bulbs that have cooling systems to prevent overheating. Another contributing factor to the blinding headlights epidemic is that SUVs and pickups have taller bodies. This means their headlights are higher, oftentimes more at the eye level of a driver in a standard passenger car like a sedan. Add to the fact that some state vehicle inspections don't adjust the position of headlights. The thing is, after a couple of years on the road, headlights can easily be bumped and change the direction of the light they shine out. One study found that around 10% of the cars have incorrectly positioned headlights. Now, 10% might not sound like a big deal, but believe it or not, that 10% has been responsible for causing between 3 to 30% more glare than NHTSA allows. So let's say you realize your headlights are out of whack. Did you know you can properly adjust them yourself? It'll just take 30 minutes or up to an hour if you slow. First, find a place with a level ground and a clean wall like a garage, for example. Then pull your car up against the wall and turn on your low beams. Take some tape and mark the center of the car on the wall. Next, try to find the horizontal middle of each headlight and mark that on the wall using the tape. Then mark the vertical center line of each headlight with the tape. Get back in your car and then back it up 25 feet. Now look at the lights on the wall. You should see your lights around two inches lower than a tape mark and slightly to the right. A side note, if you live in a country where drivers drive on the left, well, in that case, your headlights would need to be slightly to the left. Anyway, if your headlights do not line up accordingly, then pop open your hood and look at the top of the headlight. Typically, you should see two screws. One is for vertical adjustment, the other is for horizontal adjustment. With your car still pointing at the wall, adjust your headlights accordingly. We can't talk about headlights without talking about lumens. Headlights are measured in lumens. Basically, it's a unit of measurement that tells you how light impacts the central part of the eye that's more sensitive to higher wavelength, the redder light, compared to lower wavelength, bluer light. Since lumens don't count blue light, bluer lights tend to feel a lot brighter before they register as equal in lumens. That's why if you were to put a halogen and LED light side by side, the lumen light meter will tell you that they're the same. But your eyes will tell you the LED light looks about 40% percent brighter. Lumens is different from watts and kelvin, which are two other measurements you'll see associated with lights. Put simply, lumens measures brightness. Watts measures energy use, not light output. So what's kelvin? Well, let's say you wanted to buy security light for your home. In that case, kelvin would be important. Kelvin is a measurement that's used to describe the color temperature of a light source. The higher the temperature in kelvin, the cooler a color will be. The lower temperature in kelvin, the warmer a color will be. So why is color temperature important? Basically, light operates on a color spectrum. The spectrum is determined by the temperature of the light. So a cutting torch in a welding shop, for example, can reach up to 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, or 3,033.15 degrees Kelvin. If you took that same temperature and projected that light onto a wall, the color comes out would be the same color as the flame on a welding torch. With car headlights, the maximum lux rating, or number of lumens per square meter, is how we determine brightness. The best and most visible light is right in the center the spectrum. That's why good LED bulbs are typically offered in a cool white color. 
Then there are HID headlights. This stands for High Intensity Discharge. These are brighter than standard headlights. HID bulbs contain a gas called xenon, and they don't have a filament like typical halogen bulbs. Xenon gas lights up when an electric current is passed through it, and that's how it creates a much brighter glow. Problem is, these bulbs don't last that long. Ideal HID bulb has a temperature between 4300 and 6000 degree Kelvin, otherwise known as pure white light. Anything higher than 6000 Kelvin will produce a more blue toned light. And if you go all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin, you're looking at a deep, dark, and dangerous blue light. Halogen lights are a kind of an incandescent light. We're talking old school technology here. With halogen headlight, there's a filament that sits in a halogen gas. And when the current passes through it, it causes light to emit. It then pushes it through a projector lens and onto the road. If you see a car that emits a yellowish color light that isn't very bright, most likely it's halogen. On the positive side, halogen headlights are rather cheap and easy to find. They're a lot more inefficient compared to LED headlights and don't last very long. In fact, LED headlights are about 10 times more efficient than halogen ones. There are also laser headlights. Yeah, you heard me right, laser headlights. Basically, you have three blue lasers that go through a set of mirrors. Then they get fired through a lens that has yellow phosphorus in it, which reacts and emits a white light that's 10 times brighter than the LEDs. Since that's too bright to shine directly on the roads, it's put through a diffuser. What you end up with are car headlights that are still so powerful you can see close to 2,000 feet in front of your car. Did you know that your headlight can impact your insurance rates? Take daytime running lights, for example. DRLs never turn off. Basically, they're less powerful lights that are always on whenever a vehicle is running. The purpose of DRLs is to make a vehicle more visible during daylight hours, when you're not using the main headlights or taillights. These lights have been available here in the state since 1995. GM is an example of a car maker that implements DRLs in all its vehicles. Other car makers have optional DRLs, and others don't offer them at all. The thing is, domestically here in the U.S., DRLs aren't legally required. That said, most new vehicles on the market today do contain DRLs. If you're looking for a discount on your next car, you should know that many insurance companies offer discounts on vehicles that are equipped with daylight running lamps. Most Americans know that the average car has two headlight modes, low beam and high beam. Low beam is a less intense light that helps you see anywhere from two to 300 feet in front of you while driving at night. When you realize that's the length of a football field, you might be inclined to think, ah, it's pretty powerful for low beams. But here's the thing, when you're traveling at 60 miles an hour, it takes 3.4 seconds to completely cover that distance. So now those low beams don't seem so impressive anymore, do they? Then there's the high beam, which projects light in anywhere between 350 to 500 feet. It depends on your lighting system's specification. If you think brighter light makes your driving safe, well, that's both true and false, depending on the situation. If you're on the highway or rural road with no oncoming traffic within 500 feet, then yes, high beams are the safe way to go since you have more visibility. But high beams can be less safe, in fact, dangerous in certain situations. For example, high beams are actually less effective in certain weather conditions. The brighter light from high beams bounces off fog, snowflakes, or raindrops in the air, turns them into millions of tiny mirrors. All that light is then directly reflected into your eyes. Not fun and also not safe. Also, when you see oncoming traffic within 500 feet, it's actually less safe to use your high beams because they're so bright. Shining those blinding lights onto oncoming traffic as they drive past you is not only poor driving etiquette, it's plain dangerous. Just recall how you feel when someone flashes a super bright flashlight in your face. In fact, for these reasons, most states have motor vehicle laws that require you to switch off your high beams within 500 feet of oncoming traffic. Not many people know this, but if you want to increase your car's resale value, restoring your car's headlights can help. Believe it or not, you can restore your headlights yourself at home for about $10 a headlight. Start with 400 grit sandpaper, or 600 if your headlights aren't too bad. Tape around the whole edge of the headlight and leave a good barrier so you don't scratch your paint. Spray the headlight and sandpaper with water. The water is a lubricant to prevent deep scratches. Start in a swirling motion and sand horizontally. As you lightly use the sandpaper, make sure to always keep the surface of the headlight wet. Don't forget to get into the edge. Then repeat the process with 600 grit sandpaper. Next, wipe down the headlight with a paper towel. Repeat the wet sanding process with the 2000 grit sandpaper. Then dry it with a paper towel. Then put some alcohol on a paper towel and wipe off the headlight. The reason why you want to use alcohol is because it will remove any oils from your hands that may have gotten onto the lens. Plus alcohol will also make the lens dry well since it evaporates quickly. Then cut up a garbage bag to cover the entire front of your car and tape it down so it stays nice and tight. Then cut out a hole for the headlight. Tape around the headlight, wipe it with alcohol one more time and let it dry. After it dries, follow the instructions on your clear coat spray and spray the headlight three coats, waiting five minutes after each coat. Then wait 24 hours for the paint to dry. You could also wet sand the headlight with wax. Well, there you are. Good as new. 
Well, the future of headlights is looking pretty bright. More car makers these days are developing matrix LED headlights. These headlights adapt themselves to oncoming traffic. Since the 1950s, cars have been able to use a light receptor that automatically dips their lights when other cars approach. But matrix headlights are able to redirect light to screen out oncoming cars. That helps to avoid the driver from being blinded. Take a look at Audi's matrix lights, for example. These headlights use a digital micro mirror device, or DMD for short. This DMD has up to a million micro mirrors that can direct the LED light to the road or to an absorber. Its system can use steering input data to direct light to the left or right during cornering, and it can even display patterns on the ground when the vehicle is stationary. Industry experts also expect to see headlights continue to get smaller and narrower. Take Toyota's adaptive AHS system, for example. The system controls a series of LEDs individually, according to the driving environment. The LED array detects vehicles ahead via the onboard camera and adjusts the beams according to the car's location. It can also optimize headlight coverage, depending on the car's speed and driving environment. At low speeds, the beams can cover a wider area with lower light. But now you tell me, do you think headlights are getting too bright? Please share by commenting below. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for your support.